What is going on YouTube? It's your boy Eternal Oblivion, aka Black Salamander on the webcam speaker. What's good? You guys should already know we're doing a top five video. Before we start on this top five video, I want to say big shout out to Vincent Tumblr for suggesting this idea. I always wanted to do a top five dealer with fighting games, and hey, it's about time we get to it. So with all that being said, play that intro. All I need is love. Number 5, Naruto Class of Ninja. During my childhood, I never really understood what defines a fighting game. I remember playing games such as Mortal Kombat, Tekken, and even Street Fighter at one point. But during that time in my childhood, I was soon learning about anime, and obviously Naruto managed to interest me, especially the video games. If I can remember a Naruto game that I played the most, it would be none other than Naruto Class of Ninja. And this is during the era when Nintendo had me hooked with the GameCube. Class of Ninja is by far, in my opinion, in my opinion, the greatest Naruto game I ever played. At the school, I waste no time doing my homework in order to play that game. I even started to learn the meaning of labbing combos without even knowing what that phrase meant. It was so fun exploring each character and learning new tech that eventually I started to learn how to use it in actual matches against friends. During my childhood, Class of Ninja 2 was the most played game in the Class of Ninja series in my house. If I can recall the last Class of Ninja I played the most, it would be none other than Class of Ninja Revolution 2. The character roster in Revolution 2 was insane and definitely I love that they added combo canceling as well as tag team function that was sold in the Japanese version of Class of Ninja 4. I mean, to this day, I feel like Yankee Toe Ninja Tyson 4 will always be the superior installment of the Class of Ninja series. Number 4, Tekken. Going back to the days where I used to visit arcades, the very first arcade game I touched happened to be Tekken 5. Later on, I realized that that game was also on the PS2 because my cousin had a copy of it and usually I would go over to his house and play it until I went home. Not knowing the difference between 2D and 3D fighting games, Tekken was the second 3D fighting game I played since I was playing Naruto Class of Ninja. Coming up, Tekken was definitely the game that helped me understood the meaning of blocking, especially in a 3D fighting game because I would also try to play Soul Calibur. Man, <laughs> we don't talk about me playing Soul Calibur. See, in Class of Ninja, I was just a combo junkie. I didn't really have have any decent block game to begin with. Furthermore, as I grew, I started to understand the concept of blocking on the average level. Tekken, in my opinion, happens to be one of those games that helps you build up your fundamental and let alone mind games as well. But that's just my opinion, okay? Everybody is different when it comes to their fighting games. If I can recall the first character I played, it was none other than Jin because I love his design as well as his playstyle and <laughs> Let me stop playing. I mean, I can't even lie. As a kid, the first thing I thought to myself was, damn, Jin looked just like Sasuke Uchiha from Naruto. Even to this day, I enjoy playing Tekken with a passion. Maybe not at a competitive level, but just playing in general. Tekken 7 is currently the latest installment to the Tekken series, and I still play Jin every now and then because I kind of got addicted to playing as Noctis from Final Fantasy 15. Number 3, Melty Blood. This series is definitely a gem if you love playing anime fighting games. Melty Blood is a fighting game I came across during my time at Arcade Odyssey because usually I would go to the arcade to play Initial D. Once checking out the game, I noticed that some of the characters look legit like fake characters due to the art style. That's when I realized that Melty Blood is developed by Type Moon, the same people who created the Fate series. The only thing that I didn't know about Melty Blood was simply the lore and also to the fact that that game had characters that came from different series. Melty Blood definitely taught me about footsies and also how to open up my opponents. At first playing Melty Blood, I felt so tilted because I didn't really know the controls but as I progressed I knew that knowing buttons wasn't enough for me I needed to know ways how to open up my opponent that's where rain come in because rain always taught me how to play fighting games you feel me honestly I feel like it backfires because there are times where I get too predictable that I end up getting punished sadly not too many people play this game especially the PC port that's on Steam but usually I play Melty Blood whenever Flame or Jerome asked me to the character I use the most in that game is none other than Kuma because your boy love him some melee characters, especially they have Rekka, and Kuma is so fucking fresh, I can't even front. 
Number two, Undernight and Birth. Being the third anime fighting game I learned, Undernight and Birth is by far one of the best anime fighting games in my opinion. This game literally teaches you everything, and I mean everything about its gameplay. Once hearing that first bread, the same developers that worked on Melty Blood also worked on Undernight. I had to try it out. At first, I wasn't really feeling it, but the more I played, the more I started to like it. Undernight is a really great game, but when it comes to footsies, Melty Blood got it down pack. Hold up, just letting y'all know. Just letting y'all know. Even though the roster may not be as big, Undernight has a variety of good characters to choose from. Honestly, it just depends on your playstyle. And if you just want to go wild, just play Gordo. Hold up. Actually, give Merkava a chance if you really want to go and wild out because I still don't know how to deal with that character. I'm not even joking. Go wild out with Merkava. You're going to have fun. I tried out Hyde and Ordier when I first started playing. And it was crazy to see Elpnum in this game as a guest character since he's from Melty Blood. Bro, don't get me started with her arcade mode. She literally slandered almost half of the cast in Undernight. Furthermore, when the latest installment of Undernight came out, I find the successor Akuma from Melty Blood. And that character happened to be Inkidu. I mean, this character playstyle legit reminds me of Kuma. Sadly, he's considered low tier, but hey, if I really want to win games, just play Wagner. Shoot. I mean, everybody plays Wagner. Wagner is a dope-ass character, and she... She steps on people like who, who yo that's that's good that's a reason enough to play as Wagner just step on people <laughs> Number one blaze blue now it shouldn't be no surprise that blaze blue is my number one favorite fighting game franchise of all time This is literally the main anime fighting game I play on the daily and I honestly can't get enough of it Blaze blue has definitely made an impact into my life when it comes to meeting amazing people to learn how to be competitive in my own way During my childhood I used to play a lot of handheld games on my PSP and and I happened to come across Blaze Blue Continuous Shift too. Let me tell you, let me tell you, seeing Ragna activating Blaze Blue in the opening was so godlike. Like, yo, that was on some real anime shit right there. And not to mention, the music in Blaze Blue is always amazing. Like, dead ass. Unfortunately, during my childhood, I was too busy focusing on my education. I had high school on my mind, and I really wanted to make sure I graduated so bad that I almost forgot about the series in the whole. But during the year when Chrono Phantasma Extend released, I happened to meet Ray who taught me everything dealing with fighting games and I mean everything I'm so thankful for blaze blue because without it I wouldn't have met my best friend like this game really really made a powerful impact in my life because the same way how I want to get good I keep the same energy when it comes to improving my lifestyle and that really means a lot coming from a goddamn game like that's one of the beautiful things I love about fighting games there's always a deeper meaning behind it and a lot of people don't think it Sometimes I feel like fighting games isn't something you just play and go. It can literally be a lifestyle depending on the person. And I mean, hell, you have pro players playing these games and making it their job. Basically, what I'm saying is that Blaze Blue is the one fighting game I actually take pride in. And again, if it wasn't for Blaze Blue, I would have met all these amazing people from high level players to people loving the series and heck, even some of my viewers. You guys are amazing. Then again, some of y'all can be trolls at times, but yo, I still love y'all. I love y'all. When learning how to play Blaze Blue, I was stuck between learning Ragna and Jin since those characters was good for a beginner player. Now, for some reason, like, check me out, for some reason, playing Ragna. Ragnar was so difficult for me, and yes, I understand how stupid it sounds, but I was always scared to play Ragnar because I felt like he was too much for me. At the end of the day, I ended up picking up Jin and carried him all the way until Central Fiction. When Central Fiction got announced, I happened to admire one of the new characters from that installment, and that character happened to be now Tokuragani. Mind you, Rain was still teaching me how to play during that time, and shifting from Jin to Naoto was extremely hard, especially Naoto, because you know, Naoto requires micro dash in order to apply real damage. Basically, it took me a year to understand that character, and I am still trying my very best to be one of the known Naoto players. I mean, hell, I'll gladly take the title as worst Naoto in NA because I will always, and I mean I will always, play this character rather I win or lose. But anyway, tell me in the comment section, what are you guys' favorite fighting game franchises, man? Rather it be Arcana Hearts or Nitro Blaster, you know, let me know. <laughs> this is me, your boy, Nintendo Oblivion, and I'm signing out. Peace! Push me to the